So today we're gonna go over the top three attachments I think um, are just the most popular for the TG system. That's going to be the Olympus Tuck camera that we did a walkthrough on uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, so this camera, just to kind of go over it a little bit, this is a shockproof, waterproof camera. It does excellent in macro photography and has a f2 aperture on a a half inch sensor. So overall it's small size, extremely durable. It's definitely the best quality in out of the water camera that I've seen for those that are like underwater cameras. Uh, but today we're going to go over the attachments that you can put on these guys. So in the telephoto kit you actually get the adapter ring so you can use the telephoto. This adapter ring uh, can also be used instead of this ring here. It has a lens cap over it so you can protect this glass, uh, which I think is really neat. Now, something to keep in mind with the telephoto attachment that I found is that it does have a bit of a uh, it's not something that you can just leave on and go, oh, if I want the extra zoom, it's there. And I'll show you why here in a moment. Uh, but just to give you a quick reminder to remove the ring that comes on the camera, there's this unlock button. You just hold that, you turn, twist it off. To put this uh, adapter slash lens cap option on, you're going to find the white dot, line it up with the white dot on the camera until it clicks into place and at that point now you have a lens cap to protect your lens okay now this is going to be great for overall protection like this camera is already built tough which is great but you know this glass can still be technically scratched so you know sometimes it's just nice to be careful now going back to this telephoto attachment here I did find in using this that when you use this, you only use it when you want to zoom and it's, I, I'll show you example of why that is. Now it has this back cap here and you see that it has a very small opening. Now this small opening goes right over the lens. Now when we put this on and then we turn the camera on, you're gonna find that when you turn this camera on, you're going to get this very small circle in the middle. Um, and then you will have to zoom into that all the way and that's going to show you your magnification. Um, it does give you a little bit more in your zoom, but naturally, if you're zoomed all the way back, you can't really take a picture that way. So if you don't need the reach, the extra zoom there, you know, you're gonna have to take this off to take close up pictures or wide angle, that way it gets back to normal. Uh, so something to keep in mind with this teleconverter. Other than that, as you can see in the example, it does a really great job in getting that little bit of extra reach without having to uh, distort your image. With other cameras, you know, they offer digital zoom, so it, you know, basically tears apart the pixels that are available uh, for you to zoom in a little bit farther than what the camera can reach. And, you know, then you're getting, then you're getting blurry photos. You know, it's, it's not a very good photo, even though it's zoomed out. This physically gives you the magnification on another lens, very similar to uh, changing the lens on your camera. It's just giving you more of that effect. Now we are going to go over the, uh, the diffuser versus the light ring in low lighting situations. Uh, now, typically this light ring is going to be used for macro photography. Uh, so we're gonna use that first and show what it does for macro. 
So you're going to uh, put it on the same way. You're going to look for the dot. This one here is a little bit more discreet, it's a little gray. I'm gonna line that up with the dot here. Slide it over, there you go. Now to be able to use this ring, right? So for our macro photography, you're gonna go to the microscope here, right on your dial, and you can choose any of these, it's fine. I'm just gonna choose the regular microscope, mo microscope mode, uh, so we can just test that out. And at that point, you're going to go ahead and click your OK button, and you're going to go down to lighting here, which is going to be your flash, that little uh, flash symbol. And what you're gonna do is you're going to go over to your LED light, okay? Because the LED light is what powers that ring light now. So once you do that, as you can see in my examples, one with the ring light and one without the ring light, sitting right on top of a subject, you're gonna be able to get more light to your macro photography than you would without. Now the reason that it's so dark without a ring light when you're that close is naturally when you bring the camera close enough to something, it's going to turn it pitch black uh, because the camera's casting a shadow over your subject if you wanna get that close, whether it's a flower, a bug, um, you know, the carpet bark in your you know front yard, whatever it is that you wanna get in there and see the texture and the nitty gritty details of, uh, this ring light can definitely help and you'll see it turn on just by pushing halfway down. It's gonna light up your subject and focus right on in. Now this ring light can also help in low lighting situations. In the following examples, I'm gonna show an example of uh, the camera without any lighting assistance. I'm gonna show with uh, the built on flash. I'm gonna show with the LED light. I'm gonna show with the ring light, and then we're gonna go over it with our diffuser. Now, the diffuser is fantastic, personally. Um, I was actually blown away by the effect that it gave on the photos when I was testing it out. Um, I thought it gave an amazing uh, difference than using the flash because when you use your flash on the camera, it's like shining a flashlight in someone's face. It's like blinding, right? We've all been there where somebody takes a picture and you go, oh, that flash is so bright, now I can't see. Well, the diffuser basically softens that a little bit, gives you more of a natural lighting sort of effect. So again, white dot to the white dot here. That's going to go right over the flash and it's going to take it in here and soften it when you take a picture of your subject. Up here, you can use the whole flash, which is the full circle, or the half circle, which is kind of uh, half the flash power, if you want to do that. And so we get out of macro mode here. You're gonna go to your P mode, okay? Not your auto mode. The reason you wanna go to your P mode is because in auto, it doesn't let you choose um, your flash options. So if we go down to our flash options here, oops. If we go down to our flash options, we can go ahead and turn the flash on. Okay. And at that point, it's going to be able to give us a bit of a flash there and diffuse it in this ring. And it's gonna come out looking like very natural lighting. It's not blinding. You're still gonna get a really nice balance as you can see in the pictures. And in that natural uh, photo with no lighting assistance from the camera using that F2 aperture, you can see that the camera does fairly well in indoor lighting where, you know, it's just, you know, your regular indoor lighting where it's kind of dark, some cameras don't you know, exceed at that. This does okay, you know, um, it's not a top feature of this camera where it's like, oh, low light photography. Um, but it does do fairly well in circumstances where you're indoors at a birthday party or you're in the shade at the park or something like that. It should still be able to get you well-balanced images. And if you're taking any close-up pictures of people, this is a really nice tool 
as well to use alongside the flash that comes on this camera. Um, other than that, that pretty much covers the uh, most popular attachments used on this camera here. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, if you want to see um, other things uh, like, you know, different attachments or accessories for cameras and um, kind of their impact in comparison to others, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.